My name is Bob McIntyre. Um, I'm acting president right now of the Wireless Forum, so, and it is an all-volunteer organization. So what we're going to talk about tonight, <clears throat> after I introduce our sponsors, uh, and I want to thank AT&T and Aruba as well, as well as CBN and DeVry University and AIU. I need to introduce uh, Hamish. And you know, Hamish has been around the Wireless Forum for since I think we started. And uh, so Hamish is uh, going to uh, moderate our session tonight. And uh, we're going to broaden this beyond uh, regular consumer devices. We're going to really stretch this out. So without any further ado, I'm going to have Hamish come up and introduce uh, our speaker, uh, Glenn, while I uh, get our presentation ready to go. Actually, it's a real pleasure to, to be here and get an opportunity to introduce my good friend, Glenn. We've had a chance to work together in this space for a while. And Glenn Lurie is the president of AT&T's Emerging Devices uh, National Resale and Partnerships Organization. Uh, so in that role, what Glenn, and we're very fortunate because Glenn doesn't just help lead AT&T's role in this business, but I think, Glenn, it would be fair to say you're at the point of the spear in the US marketplace, if not global marketplace, uh, in the emerging device world. Uh, Glenn's been with the company of AT&T for about 1990, and, and over the years, he's had many roles in sales and marketing leadership roles. Uh, he was a, a regional manager for the West, so he knows that intense, competitive, and highly wireless data-centric market, and has also got responsibility for our national distribution relationships. And I think that's important because it's not just about the product and the devices, but success in wireless is very much about distribution and promotion. So Glenn brings that insight as well. And of course, uh, I think you've all, if you're not already users of the iPhone, you've certainly heard of it and uh, therefore familiar of that wonderful device. And we really owe it a great deal of thanks to Glenn for his leadership bringing that to the AT&T network. So thank you very much for taking some time to be with us tonight, Glenn, and share your vision for this mad, mad world of emerging devices. It's great to be here. I've spoken to this group before. Uh, I was laughing with a few people. I said, I can't wait to see your slides. I said, don't worry. It's the same ones you saw last time, so don't worry about it. Um, no, what I've been asked to do is come up and kind of get this, this going around emerging devices. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the space itself. I'm going to talk a little about what we're doing. It's, I'm trying not to make it an AT&T commercial. You are in our building, no, which, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, but really the goal here is to kind of get and throw out there some of the things that we're seeing, some of the things we've learned. Um, my group, to give you an idea, the Emerging Device Organization is two years old. That's it. You know, and I, and I laugh. You know, I think back two years ago at CES, I couldn't get a meeting to discuss wireless enabling anything. I had to convince people that it was going to be cool. Okay, then what, last year, pretty good set of meetings. This year, I took 50 people and we did 150 meetings and still couldn't meet the demand who wanted to talk to us. So I'm telling you, this space is real. I'll show you that. Anybody see our results today? You know, we announced our earnings today. I'll talk a little about that. I couldn't, you know, we just did a huge kickoff. Ralph De La Vega, who's, who's my supervisor, we did a thousand person kickoff. And we did it before earnings, so I couldn't even talk about what happened in fourth quarter. And when you're in the CE business, consumer electronics business, what's the most important quarter? Fourth. So I had to kind of, I, you know, I don't want the lawyers chasing me, so I had to kind of insinuate that we actually did okay. As of today, we can talk about how we did. So let me dive in. A couple of things. First, how many people in the room have been in telecommunications for more than five years? How about 10? How about 20? It's okay. I'm, t I'm going on 21. <laughs> and if you're old, we're old. It's all good, right? But the point is, is the reason I bring this up is think about that chart for a second. I started in the wireless business in 1990. So in 1990, what was penetration in the US? Anybody know? It's about five, six percent, okay? If any, I'll give you another question for the old folks in the room. If you go back to when the FCC first granted licenses and mobility, remember the MSAs and RSAs and what a mess they made of it? Don't, nobody from the government in here, you can, but it's a mess, right? What was the, when they looked at the business plans, what was the most the highest percentage they thought we could ever have mobility penetration. Anybody know? What do you think? One million thousand. Yeah, so actually at the time they said about 9%. 9%. Where are we today? 
right after well, Verizon and us have announced, right, we're probably getting close to 100%. So the reason I put this up is, is really to talk about why are we talking about emerging devices now? Okay, why didn't we do this five years ago? And what I'll tell you is a couple of things. First of all, carers didn't care five years ago. Theoretically, it's just a, just a fact, right? We were just five years ago, what was the coolest phone in, in the whole world? Razor. Razor. What did the Razor do? Not much. Okay, Motorola, sorry, but didn't. I loved it, I carried one for years, it was cool, it was 600 bucks, I thought I was neat, right? But it had a WAP browser, right? And now, three and a half years ago, what happened? The iPhone hit and changed the world. So when you start looking at this, the point I wanna make here is, is it's, the stars are aligned. The CE players have figured out their next great product has gotta be smarter. To be smarter, it's gotta be connected. And I mean everything, right? The wireless carriers have figured it out. You think anybody in the room from Qualcomm might have figured this out? You think maybe Ericsson figured it out? Do you think Microsoft? Everybody in the ecosystem all of a sudden woke up and went, wow, this, this actually might be real. The other question is, is, is that real? By the way, it, it, the reason I ask this is, okay, it's, it's, it's 2011. Two years from now, is 300% real. If it is, I will be out of a job because it better be four or 500%. And that's the point you have to think about. And it's hard, especially for us old folks who have wireless baggage, because we, we've been around this so long, it's hard. But I'm telling you that 300% is, is just, we're just scratching the surface. All right, this is the water wheel we talk about. This is my water wheel. I, I apologize, this is what we look at, is what AT&T's focus is. This is not everything, but the point, I wanna make two key points on here. Point is, is in the middle of the bubble, it's about networks, not network. Okay, this is not just about 3G or 4G, by the way, we'll have this conversation. Customers don't give a rip about Gs, we'll get there in a minute. What customers care about is their experience. But the point I'm making here is, all these devices will have Wi-Fi, all these devices will work in your home, your office, Starbucks, and, they'll, and again, they will all obviously have wide area network capabilities, but you need to think about all of them. By the way, all wireless carriers in the world today are thinking about all of them because of the growth of overall data usage. And I'll have a slide here in a minute. I, I might have killed it. We'll see in a minute. I can talk about it. But the point I want to make that's really critical is, is it's about networks. Now, when you go around the horn here, this is a small subset of what the opportunity is. So I'm not going to go too deep into this. I've been asked to kind of go fast as we have a lot of time to do Q&A. But I want you to think about, have e-readers been a big hit? How many people in here have an e-reader? Kindle, Sony, right? Got done well. And actually, by the way, their death was predicted the second the iPad was launched, right? By the way, what happened? They accelerated, right? Because what we found is, is there's actually 41 million people in the US that consider themselves readers. And when asked, why do you buy an e-reader? They didn't say, because I want a multitasking device that bugs me all the time. They said, I want to read a book. And guess what? When I go on my international flights, which I do too much, I see people have iPads and Kindles because they, that is replacing a book. They don't want text and all that, okay? The other thing that's important up here is computing. Tablets is all the buzz. We can talk about them. I know we will. Okay, there were about 100 of them, right? At CES, you'll see about eight of them launch. That's okay. That's what CES is about, right? But there's lots of people talking about them, but the whole computing space is very exciting because that space, in my opinion, every single computing device made should be what? Connected. Why in the world would you want a computing device that you can't get on when you need it? when and where you want, okay? We can talk about uh, telematics, huge opportunity. Most of you, if I ask, have a screen in your car that probably doesn't do much, right? Maybe, maybe Bluetooth, maybe you can see who's calling you, maybe you, you know, hands-free, that's about it. What's the future? Front seat, safety, security, real-time traffic. Your car tells you when it's broken and makes a call and sets the appointment for you because it knows your calendar. That's, that, that's happening and that's gonna happen more. Back seat, what, what do our kids want? everything, right? I want my content, I want to be on Facebook, I got a 14 and a 17, I got it down, right? And that's what they want. The car will have that. And guess who's gonna bring it? The car manufacturers, the chipset providers, us, the whole ecosystem, okay? And I can go around gaming devices. We announced the Garmin tracking device at CES that I'm extremely excited about. Won't get into it too much, but I'll tell you, if you have a device that let's just say costs two hundred dollars. Say say, say a next year it costs a hundred dollars. That you can strap to anything you want to strap it to, and on any device, any smartphone, you can see where it is. What wouldn't you strap it to? 
Think about the applications, dogs, kids, possessions, business, okay? And people look at me and go, well, Glenn, you're gonna get two bucks a month. Okay, 100 million of those are two bucks a month and my network cost is virtually zero. Okay, I'm in. Think about it. That's, that's the point we gotta start to think differently about this business, okay? And we'll get into smart meters. I mean, Michelle's here. I'm, I'm not gonna say anything, Michelle will yell at me. We talk about smart metering and how important that is. I will also take that to the connected home. Because once you've connected the smart meter, why are you just using it for a meter? If it's a 3G module or a 4G module, you can do all kinds of fun stuff in the home that we probably will get into some Q&A on. And then I'll, I'm very excited about our Vitality Health, uh, our pill cap, which is a $150 billion problem that hopefully this solves just a little piece of, which reminds you to take your medication. Simple stuff like that. Okay? This is the really big slide. Okay? Every single analyst on the planet, and there's some of you in this room who I know have said this is really big. And whether you're saying it's a trillion devices, well, from the Cisco CTO, hope, I hope they're right, to the Ericsson CEO saying 50 billion, it doesn't matter. My question to all of you is, another question, how many of you have shopped at Best Buy in the last six months? Come on, y'all have, don't, right? <laughs> okay, and the fact is when you walked into Best Buy, next time you're in there, I want you to walk around and find me a device that wouldn't be better if it was connected. Send me an email, because I won't get any emails, because there's not any. It always is gonna make it smarter. By the way, and don't think connected to the web only. Think connected to each other. Think about those working together. You being able to do more with devices that can talk to each other. Okay, but bottom line, really big, huge opportunity, and I'll continue to make that point. So what have we learned? Really important, what we've learned is, is a huge market. This is, this is our numbers. Today we announced um, that between what we call connected devices and, and our tablet business, which is our emerging device business, embedded computing, just under two million new subscribers in Q4, okay? So that number now goes up to about 10.8 and obviously ramping. Guess what? And I got some of my team in the room, I'm not happy about it. We kicked everybody else's butt, trust me. Verizon did like a couple hundred thousand, okay? My point is, is that we're just scratching the surface of this business. And so I'm not satisfied until I start to see 10, 12, I mean millions and millions paradigm shift of numbers that we can bring on. But I am proud of the fact that we've created this business. The other thing I'm proud of is, as, as Hamish said very nicely, is we've put on more e-readers than anybody in the world, more tablets than anybody in the world, more of everything anybody in the world. And guess what? We now have learned more than anybody in the world. We've seen what customers like. We've seen how they want to activate. We've seen how they want to utilize that how they want to monetize with us. We've seen their usage, right? My competitors have it. Gives me an advantage when I'm talking to that next OEM. Guess what? Here's how I can help you. Here's what I've seen. Because obviously we were the first to have iPad. There's three readers in the market. They're all with us. There's actually four. We launched Pan Digital recently. So we're starting to learn about this space, which gives you a, a leg up. Couple of things, and I'm gonna go fast here. This space is not done. This space is not, it, it, it may morph a little bit more towards tablet, but this space is here to stay and still growing rapidly, right? Um, Barnes & Noble launched the new Nook Color in the holiday, and, Gar, uh, and Amazon launched their new device, both sold out. Just that simple. They can't build them fast enough, okay? This space will continue to go. There's my 41 million number. You go into this, this space, everybody wants to talk about is a tablet space. Does anybody here think that a tablet computer today replaces your laptop? Do you? Nah, I'm not. Do you think it will in a year? Yeah, see? And the way I look at it is, if you've got a, if you've got a continuum and iPads in the middle, you've got a lot of people going downstream. Galaxy Tab, I launched one. Seven inch, a little cheaper downstream. What about going upstream? Okay, anybody seen Microsoft launch a tablet yet? Do you think they will? Of course, they own the desktop, why wouldn't they? And so you start to think about where this space is gonna go. And this space has lots and lots of legs. Does it mean the death of the laptop? No, 347 million will be sold, right, this next year. It just means that we have a new space and today I believe an ancillary device, okay? A couple of key areas to talk about to, that, that as, we go, as we get in the Q&A that you might wanna get more into. This space, in my opinion, may be the biggest. Okay, we have a government that is obviously trying to find ways to save money, be more efficient, right? We have everybody in the ecosystem who knows they have to fix this. Okay, I talked about the pill, pill bottle. All we've launched is a Vitality pill cap. Puck in your house, integrated website, you set it up, it reminds you to take your medicine. Okay, that's simple. Let me give you a stat. 
So, and I won't ask him to raise their hand on this one. Do you realize that in America today, 47% of Americans over 50 don't take their meds right? Think about that. 47%, it's a $140 billion problem because what happens you don't take your meds right? You go to the doctor, okay? And the whole ecosystem. So it's just simply having a pill cap that reminds you that, hey, guess what? You haven't taken it. Oh, by the way, it tells your doctor you're not taking it. tells your mom, dad, brother, sister who you set up is a huge increase. And all it takes is a little tweak and you save billions of dollars in cost. That's a simple idea. That's the one that's up there and there's others. I talked about automotive. Automotive, the hard part about this business, anybody in the automotive business? It, yep, so what, great idea today, we're stoked, Glenn, that's phenomenal, well, it's 2000, we'll have it in 2015 car. Well, by 2011 and a half, it's old. Okay, so that's one of the problems. So we're trying to help do this thing faster, right? We're trying to help understand and innovate faster. This is a huge opportunity. They'll be embedded cars, every car will be embedded. When you walk in with your smartphone, whether mine or somebody else's, if you have somebody else's, we'll talk later, but when you walk in with your smartphone, it's gonna tether and allow you to utilize that smartphone because the car companies have to do that. But the key is, you're gonna want all those features. You're gonna want all that opportunity. You're gonna want that smartness in your vehicle. It's gonna be there. Okay, how are you gonna be, first of all, the only way you're successful is network. Okay, and we can talk about network all day long. Someone's gonna raise their hand tonight and go, Glenn, I was over here, I dropped a call, you guys are horrible, right? It's all, that's supposed to be funny. It's, it, it's, 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 it's all good, it's wireless. Okay, the point being is, is the networks have to be there and today they are, okay? We're going faster, we spent, we spent you know, 18 and a half, 19 billion dollars last year on network. Randall said today, we're gonna spend 19 plus billion again this year. Why? Because that's your product, okay? And as you can see, this is our roadmap, this is where we're going. Many of these devices don't need 3G. In fact, many of these devices work great on 2G. Problem is, is you haven't future-proofed for applications. So you're gonna see us go 3G, you're gonna see us go 4G, HSP, HSPA plus, and obviously into LTE. Okay, a couple other points. As you think about what the long poles and the tent were in this space, okay, one of the key long poles is carriers are rigid. I'm one of them, right? Done business the same way forever. Why in the world would we want to do anything different? We learned very quickly, the only way to be successful, if I'm talking to an OEM, is to be flexible in business model. Okay, business model meaning, I don't need you to have a two-year contract and sign a deal, da, 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 right? And these are three examples. If you have a Kindle, you don't even know who your carrier is, really, right? You buy a book for 995, right? The transport is what? Inside the content costs. And we even asked people when we, actually, when we took Kindle uh, from one of my competitors, we asked them, well, who's your carrier? I don't know. Well, how does the book get there? And we had people write, well, I think it's just magic. It just showed up. <laughs> right? I'm okay with that, by the way. Because people go, well, oh, Glenn, that makes you a dumb pipe. Being a dumb pipe, making lots of money, I'm feeling pretty good about that. My point to you is, is the model was revolutionary. It was different, right? Look at iPad. We launched an iPad. Anybody have an iPad? When you activated your iPad, did you call anybody? No. You, got, you went to wherever you went. You went wherever you wanted to go. You turned it on. You put your information in and picked the rate plan off. You went. Right? Our scores on iPad are the highest consumer index scores we've ever seen. Believe it or not, for those of you in the wireless business, did you ever think a customer would tell us they love our activation process? Seriously. <laughs> Come on, right? They always tell us how much they hated it, right? Activation process scores are an 80 plus. They love it, right? They love the fact we've given them flexibility. You want to turn it off? Not a problem. You want to turn it on? Great. Go on the pe you don't have to call anybody. I don't think anybody you wake up in the morning going, I really want to call AT&T today, just to say hi, right? You don't. So point being is that was revolutionary. It's a different model. It's all prepaid. Okay, it, it, people like it. Last point, the old model, postpaid data, people want it. I'm willing to sign a two-year contract. Give me a little subsidy and I'll, I, I'm cool with that. That's a model. My point to everybody is, is the carriers that went out early and said, I'm willing to try anything, which was me and my team. I'm willing to bring anything to my CFO. I'm willing to go, that's exactly what we did. And we cut deals. And we had great partners on their side who were saying, look, we're looking for wins for us and the customer. And that's how you do it. Okay? Last point. Um, we attack this space differently. So AT&T, big company, right? $124 billion, almost 300,000 employees. When asked to do this job, I went to Ralph and then to Randall and said, I need to do it different. I want to be a startup. I want to be treated separately. I want my own little gig. And that's what they gave me. Why? 
because I wanted to go fast. And so what we were able to do is, I'm a one-stop shop. My Mel's not here, but I've got my own lab. So I don't have to fight with the other guys about who doing smartphones around that. I also wanted my own lab because I wanted to become experts at wirelessly enabling stuff they've never seen before, which is what they've done. It's in Austin, actually. Um, I've got my own finance, my own lawyers, everything, so I could go faster. So when I'm sitting across the table, I'll pick on Garmin. Um, I sit across the table from Cliff, who's their COO, and he had no idea he wanted to wireless enable anything. He's done a few now, right? I said, Cliff says, well, who's going to make the decision? I go, well, we are. There's three of us sitting here. Who's going to certify it? Well, she is. What's the business model? What business model do you want? And guess what? It went pretty good. And all of a sudden, Cliff said, I'll give it a, I'll give it a try. And now we're very good partners, okay? Obviously, I talked about that. I talked about the network. And obviously, last and certainly not least, distribution's key, okay? We have relationships with every OEM. And we have relationships with every national retailer, and we have 2,200 stores, we have a web. A lot of these players that come to us don't know how to sell stuff. They're, they're engineers, they're smart, they've built something. Now they need help, and we're able to bring that help to them. Okay? So I'm going to stop there, and hopefully that got us going for good q and I appreciate it.